Despite America's desire for local control, the reality is we have the worst of both worlds. On the one hand, district administrators and boards constrain through standardization, bureaucracy, and one-size-fits-all solutions, policies, and regulations that limit the freedom of principals who have little control over their budgets, their staff, and their curriculum. But these principals are prevented oftentimes from doing what's right for students. And sadly, reform-minded school boards and superintendents are not strong enough to overcome the obstacles that state and federal bureaucrats impose upon them. We know that mandates, policies, regulations, and statutes do produce compliance, but they also, also stifle initiative and suppress creativity. Over the past decades, we've seen waves of highly touted reforms and promising innovations, announced with fanfare and acclaim, but most have failed to deliver on their promises. Others are poorly implemented, and some have failed badly hurting students in the process. But in the face of persistent failure and embarrassing outcomes, why do the education special interest lobby groups and union bosses vehemently oppose reforms and education freedom? They even oppose allowing parents the opportunity to pick a different public school than the government assigned school. Interestingly, many early childhood and pre-K systems, and as well as in our higher education system, the systems are based on freedom. By that I mean that in many states, money for pre-K follows the child to the public or private provider of the parent's choice. And in higher education, all federal scholarship dollars and loans and grants follow the student to the university of their choice. Likewise, most state scholarship dollars follow the student. The student can take that money to a community college, a technical college, a research university, a teaching college, a faith-based institution, or a school focused on a specific academic discipline like engineering or theology. It's only in the K-12 world where we vilify those who suggest that we should empower parents by funding school students instead of funding the school system. 